A young man named Jerome Holm narrates to us that he hasn't seen this land when it was green, but his father has. Years ago, it used to be home to several farmers who grew wheat and grains on it. However, after drought struck the land, not a single plant has been able to grow. Most of the farmers left the place, but Jerome's father, Ernest, hoped the land would be green again. He still believes that it just needs some water. But in this world, people kill each other for water. In the first scene, we see two muggers trying to break into a tiny house. Ernest catches them and kills the first one. The second mugger tries to convince him to spare his life, but is killed when he secretly takes a gun out. His son Jerome insists he could have helped him. The house. The house the muggers were breaking into has an old water pump that stops working when Ernest tries to use it. With no water left, the father and son make their way on a mule to the waterman, people who extract water from deep wells through a government deal. Ernest exchanges supply with those people for water. He has been trying to convince them to provide him with water to cultivate a small part of his land for years. However, the watermen only do it for the right amount of money that Ernest cannot afford. On the way back, their mule falls down and breaks its leg. Ernest reluctantly shoots the animal dead. The two come back home to Jerome's sister Mary, serving them bag food. Because of water scarcity, we see Mary cleansing the dishes with soil. The following day, Jerome and Ernest visit Sam Lever's auction house to get something. The mother, to replace the mule who died. There, a robotic carrier machine called Simulate Shadow, Sim, catches their eyes. Ernest wins the auction against a man named Flem Lever, who also happens to be Sam's son. Flem is having an affair with Mary, unknown to Ernest and Jerome. The two then go to meet Jerome's sick mother, Catherine Holm. She lives in a nearby hospital where she can walk while wired to a special frame. Since the frame is too expensive, they cannot bring her home. Jerome spends his time with his mother that day. Ernest and Catherine kiss goodbye and separate. On their way back, Ernest and Jerome stop at a gas station. We see Ernest take a gulp of petrol after pumping it into his vehicle. The couple, the two encounter a couple with a young baby begging for water. The father, Robbie, wants to sell the baby because they cannot afford to take care of him. But Ernest advises against it and tells him that he'll help them with water. Robbie knows of Flem and Mary's affair and hints at Ernest towards it. At home, Ernest confronts Mary about her sneaking out frequently. But she claims that it is her freedom and tells her father that she hates him. She tries running away, but Ernest locks her in her room and nails her windows shut. One morning, Ernest and Jerome wake up to Sim absent from its shed. Someone had stolen it. Ernest assumes it was Flem and goes to his house, but finds out from Sam that he has left with a truck that morning for the mountains. Ernest then goes looking for him to the waterman, but they knock him unconscious. When he regains consciousness, it is already night. The watermen accuse him of stealing their supplies. Ernest insists that he didn't steal them, but their leader, Caleb, attacks him. They fight for a while, but Ernest manages to get his hands on his rifle and run away from there. On his way back home, he discovers Flem sleeping on the road with Sin by his side. It is clear that he had stolen the machine and the watermen's supplies. Ernest points the rifle at him, holds him hostage, then ties him to the machine. He wants to take Flem back to the waterman to prove his innocence. On their way, Flem makes comments about Mary, which angers Ernest. After walking for a while, both of them get thirsty. Flem persuades Ernest to use the water from the waterman's supply. The two sit down to drink water and chat. Flem then tries to convince Ernest to let him go, and they can share the money, but Ernest is adamant about getting him caught. Ernest is weak and limp. He clearly cannot walk another mile to the waterman. Flem knows this, so he strikes Ernest with a stone making him hit his head on a cliff. His head starts to bleed uncontrollably, and he is knocked unconscious. Ernest wakes up to find himself tied instead of Flem. Flem pours water into Ernest's mouth as he screams. Later, we see Flem arrive at Ernest's house on his motorbike to take Mary. She happily runs out to him. Ernest's death. Ernest still hasn't come home, so Jerome goes out to look for him. He finds the machine alone on the way. When he reaches the waterman, they inform him of Ernest's death. Everyone assumes that it was caused by the machine. In the following scene, we see everyone mourning Ernest's death at his funeral. Later, Catherine and the kids cry in her hospital bed. When they come out, Flem picks them up in his truck. After Ernest's death, Flem has now become the mentor of the family. He calms Jerome down as he hits him for killing his father. Later, he tells him that Mary is pregnant with his child and that he loves her. Jerome accepts their relationship. Later that day, Flem goes to the watermen and talks to them about sending water to Ernest's land. Caleb laughs at his idea but gets defensive when Flem blames him for Ernest's death. Flem also shows him a knife with Caleb's name that was found with Ernest's body. 
Scared of the accused, Caleb agrees to divert water to their field. Everyone is happy when the land gets its first sprinkle of water. Flynn works day and night to grow wheat on the land. A few months later, they are fully grown. Flynn gets married to Mary and currently lives at Ernest's home with Jerome and Mary. One day his father, Sam, with some men from the bank, approaches their house, threatening to take the land because of Ernest's debt. Selling baby? The debt is too much for Flynn to pay. So he takes the machine with him and approaches his friend Robbie that night. He knows about Robbie's intention to sell his child, so he persuades Robbie to come with him, just to see how much a baby can be worth. However, when they reach there, Robbie realizes that Flem has secretly made a deal with the people to sell his baby. The people try to take the baby away. Robbie resists and is shot dead by Flem. This causes a shootout between the dealers, and Flem runs away with the money. However, the machine, Sim, is shot and damaged. This activates the auto mode in the machine which causes it to return back to its manufacturer, Calvin Hoyman. Sim returns. The following day, Flem pays the bank from the money he sold the child with. Jerome assumes that the money came from selling Sim, so no one suspects anything. In the following scene, we see Sim limping its way back to Calvin, who lives across the border. Calvin calls the number inscribed on Sim and reaches Holmes' residence. He talks to Jerome about the machine coming back to him, which shocks Jerome, because Flem had told him he sold it to Robbie. Jerome asks Flem if Robbie sold Sim's parts and it somehow made it to the owner, but Flem gets annoyed at him for the question and dismisses it. Then he tells them he is going to meet his mother that evening, but instead, he plans to cross the border to meet Calvin, the manufacturer of Sim. Later, he reaches the border, but the guard stops him because he is too young to cross it. Sim meets Calvin. A girl named Anna calls him over and tells him she knows a way he can go to the other side. In exchange for money, she puts him in a vehicle with chickens and sends him over. They meet again on the other side and separate. Jerome then goes to meet Calvin. There, Calvin shows him all the functions of the machine. He also shows that the machine's eyes are cameras that were made to capture the slope for reforestation. The camera has captured all that the machine has seen. Jerome plays the recordings and sees his time with Ernest. As he goes through it, he is horrified to see that Flem was the one who killed Ernest. That day, after Ernest had gained consciousness, Flem tied him to the machine and set its destination to the waterman. The machine had dragged an injured but alive Ernest to his death. By the end of the video, tears roll down Jerome's eyes. In the evening, he returns home, but doesn't confront Flem about anything. One day, Flem and Jerome are hunting deer, after which Jerome keeps the rifle with him, hiding it under his bed for the future. At breakfast, Jerome tells Flem about Robbie calling him. Flem is surprised and accuses Jerome of lying because he knows Robbie is already dead. Later, Flem receives a letter written by Jerome as Robbie. The letter asks Flem to meet Robbie at the same place he has killed Ernest. He is confused by this, but he decides to find out whether Robbie is still alive. Later at night, Flem tells a pregnant Mary that he has to go out to sell something. Mary wishes him luck and asks him to come back soon. When Flem reaches the place, he calls for Robbie. As he walks, he falls down a pit and breaks his legs. He lies there calling for help when Jerome appears in front of him. Seeing him there, Flem takes a sigh of relief and asks him for help. However, Jerome stands there with a rock in his hand. Flynn realizes that he knows everything that happened and apologizes to him, claiming it was just an accident. He begs him to spare his life for Mary and their child, but Jerome doesn't listen. He points the rifle at Flem and shoots him dead. It has been two days since the event. Mary is worried about her husband, but Jerome asks her to wait a little more. He has decided to keep Mary in the dark about both Ernest's and Flem's death. Mary suggests they bring their mother home because they now have the money to afford the ringing system she lives in. The movie ends as Jerome erases all the video memory from Sim.